pretty soon we're going to have to extract some data, so we're going to need to become, become a little bit familiar with some data extraction tools. We have four types of base data. We have our soils, our aerial, and our DEM, or DEM and aerial, and then we have a lot of county data. This may not seem like a lot of data to work with, but you can extract a lot of information from these given maps almost exponentially. In the ARB toolbox, there are two types of tools you will use to extract more information from base maps. The first set of tools has to do with raster type tools, and these are located in the Spatial Analyst toolbox. So that would be these set of tools here. So if you're working with rasters, these are the set of tools that you would use to manipulate rasters. The other type of tools are more for vector-based data, and those tools are located here in the analysis tools. And these allow you to manipulate vector-based data. So remember, there's two types of data in GIS. We have our vector, and we have our raster-based data types. So the rest of this tutorial is going to give you a summary description of each major tool set. Then we'll try to use some of these tools. We may not be able to use each and every single one. We'll just go through and use a handful that apply to our sub-objectives. If you want to learn more about a particular tool that's not being used here, you can use this search layout over here on the right side, and you can simply type in the name of the tool. So for example, if we expand out local and we want to learn more about cell statistics, we can do a search on that. And the first time that comes up here says Cell Statistics Spatial Analyst Tool. If I click on this top one, the tool will actually open. If I click on this bottom one, or just roll my mouse over it, it shows me where it's located at in the ARC Toolbox. And then the middle one, the middle link, will actually open the Help menu for this tool. So I'm going to click on the middle one. It takes a little while to open, because sometimes it goes out to the web. I have a slow internet connection here. And right now, I'm in the Cell Statistics Spatial Analyst Tools. You do need the Spatial Analyst extension, of course, to be able to use this tool. And it gives us a summary. It calculates per cell statistic from multiple rasters. So this is a raster-based tool. This is input raster 1, input raster 2, input raster 3, output raster, or resulting raster. It also gives us some usage information, some syntax if you want to use this in Python. If some of you are into Python programming, this is you can totally automate the use of a lot of these tools together using Python. You don't have to use Model Builder. There's some code examples here, some environmental variables that you can set, and then some additional information down here, which appears there's nothing in there. So I just want to make you aware that we may not be able to cover each and every single tool, but you have this search function over here that allows you to explore the tool in more detail on your own. So I'm going to talk about our raster-based tools first, and this first one here are, is um, conditional tools. These tools perform analysis based on satisfying a condition or set of conditions. So if we expand this, we have con, we have pick, and we have set null. The next one is density. Density tools allow you to calculate the density of input features within a neighborhood around each output raster cell. So when it's talking about neighborhood in this sense, it's not referring to like a subdivision or a collection of houses. It's talking about neighborhood in the sense of something near something else. So you can see point density, line density, kernel density. So in this case it's talking about density. How many points there are around a set area. The next one is distance. Let me make this a little bit bigger. The distant tools perform distance analysis of Euclidean, which is straight line distance, cost weight distance, cost weight distance allowing for vertical and horizontal restrictions to movement, and paths and corridors between sources with the least cost of travel. And like I said, if you're not sure what all of this means, definitely use the search box. I'm not going to spend a lot of time and detail into that right now. The next one is extraction. 
These, these functions will extract values from a raster based on attributes of the raster or characteristics of a second control raster, a polygon or bounding coordinate. The next one is called generalization. These tools are used to clean up small erroneous data in the raster or generalize the data to get rid of unnecessary detail from a more general analysis for a more general analysis, sorry. The next one is groundwater. The groundwater tools can be used to perform rudimentary advection dispersion modeling of constituents in groundwater flow. The next one is hydrology. These tools are used to model the flow of water across a surface. The next one is interpolation. These tools create a continuous or prediction surface from sample point values. The next one is called local. These functions act on raster data one cell at a time until all cells in the raster have been processed. So this is kind of like neighborhood where it's looking at each cell individually. The next one, my favorite tool, is the raster calculator. This tool is used to write single line equations with map algebra expressions. The next one is the math tool, and there's quite a bit of subtools in here. These tools perform mathematical analysis of raster data. The next one is multivariate. And these tools allow you to explore the relationships among different types of attributes. The next one is neighborhood. And again, this doesn't have to do with subdivision or collection of houses, but this is in reference to the cells in a raster. These tools are used to create output values for each cell located based on the location value and the values identified in a specified neighborhood. The next one is overlay. Overlay analysis tools allow you to apply weights to several inputs and combine them into a single output. The next one is raster creation. These tools generate a new raster where the output values are based on a constant or a statistical distribution. The next one is reclass. These tools are used to reassign raster values in order to create new categories. The next one is solar radiation. These tools allow you to map and analyze the effects of the sun over a geographic area for a specific period of time. The next one is surface. These tools allow you to visualize terrain and landforms. The next one is zonal. It's actually the last tool in this group. And zonal tool summarizes data from a raster by using specified zones from a control raster or polygon feature class. The second set of tools that will be extremely useful to you in extracting data is going to be our vector-based tools. And that's up here where it says analysis tools. So we have four sets of tools here. We have extract, overlay, proximity, and statistics. So the first one, extract tools, let me expand that. And we have four subtools here. These functions will remove spatial features from one or more thematic layers based on spatial or attribute queries and place the results into a new thematic layer. So we've already used CLIP. So what did CLIP do? CLIP allowed us to extract information and then put it into another layer. And we used CLIP to extract some soils data. The next one is Overlay. This tool works with two or more layers to combine, erase, or update spatial features and send them to a new output layer. The next one is proximity. These tools are used to measure the distance and direction or spatial features within a layer or between two layers. 
And the last one here is statistics. These tools perform standard statistical analysis or attribute on attribute data. Frequency, mean, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, and then results are saved to a new table. One question I always get about the tools is how do you know which tool to use? And sometimes this just involves going through and just becoming aware that a tool exists and then when you are when you cross a problem you kind of know in the back of your head, well, I know that I have these sets of tools available to me, and this is what I can do to try to get the desired results from a certain type of calculation. Sometimes you may just have to ask someone who's experienced and have used all the tools which tool they think would be the best ones to use, and sometimes they'll just call out a tool and then you should be able to click in your mind, oh yeah, I remember reading about that in extraction, or I saw that in distance and you should be able to take off from there. So as far as which tool to use, it just simply requires just some experience, just playing around with the tools and just going through and reading each of the descriptions like we just kind of did.